friends, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. It is 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or maybe even good night, wherever you are here on planet Earth, and welcome to Planet IMEX. My name is Jonathan Bradshaw, creator of Metology. It's a great pleasure to be your moderator for this morning's first two sessions. Traditionally, at this time of year, and for the last nine years, the business meetings and events community would descend on Las Vegas to enjoy IMEX America. And I know each and every one of you joining us this morning wish you could be there now, meeting physically. Shaking hands, making eye contact, a hug, a kiss, a coffee, a drink, negotiation, doing business, experiencing face-to-face -face human interaction. You know, as humans, we're often told we're social creatures, and it's very true. As humans, we have a deep desire to be part of tribes, communities, groups, and clubs. And of course, face-to-face -face interaction is a huge part in us being able to do that. But from a business perspective too, if you look at behavioral science and research from that area, you'll see that generally it suggests that levels of likability, creativity, influence and persuasion, trust, rapport, are also higher when we meet face to face. I know whether it's from the human perspective or the business one, we all hope that we're meeting face to face at an IMEX event very soon. But for now, we can't. And we're just thankful for this amazing technology that allows us as humans and the IMEX group to create a platform such as this so we can interact. You're probably aware this is the second time this year IMEX has pivoted. You didn't think you were getting through the first minute without me saying that word to create a Planet IMEX edition. And unlike the first one from May, that was islands surrounded by water, this one is an underwater, sub-aquatic wonder world of networking, education, and content. And of course, we're already on day two. It's a five-day event, but yesterday, I managed to jump on and see a few sessions from Monday Fun Day. And I saw from social media the thousands of you enjoying an amazing array of experiences. A balloon ride over Turkey, a helicopter ride over Vegas, a magician, origami, meditation, mindfulness, um, a, a session from Cirque du Soleil, no less. An incredible, uplifting, positive start to the week. And today starts the second, is the second day or, and the first day of general education. So what do we have in store for you today? Well, it's a very, very interesting day and one I'm sure you're going to find amazing. But looking back on yesterday, I think it set a, a tone that I think you're going to see throughout the next four days, and that's positivity. Yesterday's sessions uplifted us, and there's one in particular that I'd like to mention, a very, very personal one. Most of these are available on demand, but one you shouldn't miss is a very personal interview with the chairman of the IMEX group, Mr. Ray Bloom. A very personal interview about his, his the history behind, the backstory behind IMEX, IMEX America, but almost also IMEX in Frankfurt. Um, his love of football or soccer and him seeing Elvis live, uh, the Beatles live, a really personal story. I suggest you look at that on catch up in the next few days. And talking about Ray, it is my great pleasure to ask him to join us. Yes, the chairman of the IMEX group, Mr. Ray Bloom, along with the CEO of the IMEX group, Karina Bauer, join us now from the city of Brighton and Hove on the south coast of England. Ray, Karina, welcome. Good morning from America. Um, from a sunny Oklahoma, as a fellow Brit, I have to ask you the most obvious first question. How's the weather over there? A bit autumnal, John. A bit autumnal. Well, I won't yeah, tell you so much about that, so I don't want to get you jealous, but it's <laughs> lovely of you to join us. Thank you for being part of this first session. I want to have a quick overview of um, perhaps yesterday with Karina, but first, Ray, if I may, I'd like to, to start with you. I've got, got two or three questions for you. 
Ray, I'd like to start with a question about the industry. Yesterday, as I said, Monday, fun day, a very positive, uplifting experience. But it goes without saying that the industry is obviously going through an unprecedented time, a tough, tough time. But I know you have witnessed and also been involved in some real industry collaborations that are going to hopefully speed up um, the message to the wider world about how important this industry is. Can you tell us a bit more about the projects you've involved in, been involved in and what you've seen the industry do in this regard? Yes. First of all, John, I'd like to be a big welcome to Planet IMEX from Karina and myself, as you say, here from Brighton, England. Um, thank you very much for the question. Um, one of the things I've seen so much after the last several months has been the tremendous collaboration within the industry. The collaboration has taken many forms. It's from a personal point of view with industry people and friends supporting each other, which has been very important. And then it's the industry coming together really to try and get support at the political level in various forms of support. I'd like to mention in particular one in the United States, the Meetings Means Business Coalition, of which I'm a member of the Board of Directors. The coalition is not a new innovation. It's been going since 2008 after the financial crisis, and it's driven by um, US travel. And there are many members of the industry, leaders in the United States who belong to this board. They've been working very hard on Congress to try and get support. I believe they've made a great deal of progress Things have been held up at the political level with the election and other reasons, but I'm still hopeful that all the work that they've been doing, they've been working constantly, is going to provide support for the industry in the United States, which is so important. So that's been a tremendous collaboration. We've seen associations working together very closely. Again, that's been going on for some years, but even more so since in, during the last few months. And here in the UK, I think I haven't seen the industry come together in the way it has after during this period ever before. And it's more than just even the business event sector. It's various sectors taking into account all forms of different events, festivals, even sometimes the arts as well. So far, I think it's been very difficult to get any results, especially with, with the virus still with us. But the work is going on all the time. And more than anything else, the industry is looking to get more recognition. It's not an easy task. We all know that who are in the industry, but that is going on constantly. And I've seen it from other parts of the world as well, not just Europe, not just the uh, United States, but also in Asia. Great. Yeah, I think a very unscientific experience looking on LinkedIn when you see the people uh, in the meeting professionals lobbying and a lot more political uh, persuasion going on there. So um, let's hope it continues, obviously. Ray, rather than look at the industry, perhaps we can look at the suppliers, the people within it. Um, innovation. Um, if there's one thing that uh, suppliers, organisers have had to be in the last six, seven months has, be, has been innovative. What do you think that has shown and what have you seen in terms of organizers having to change the way they deliver the content to their audiences and also suppliers tweaking their products to make them available and relevant to, to organizers? Um, it's been an interesting, to put it mildly, time over the last seven months for those within the, in the industry. Tell us a bit more about what you've seen. During the period, of course, with the industry almost effectively closing down globally, it's been essential for the industry to change and be able to adjust. And one of the major adjustments has, has clearly been on the technology side, where we've seen virtual conferences, virtual meetings, we've seen hybrid meetings, and we've seen the use of technology on the supplier side as well, promoting themselves. But in particular, the, the speed at which the industry has changed, we at least allow the meetings to go on. We all know it's not the same as face-to-face, -face, but it does mean that various corporations you, through our industry have been able to come together and put on their events. So I would say one of the most noticeable things, the speed at which the industry has adapted, even here ourselves with Planet IMEX 2, we've done the same. We're pleased to put on the event this week. But that would be, I say, the greatest innovation and the greatest change. But it's the speed at which it's been done, which is so impressive. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Ray. The last question I want to uh, put to you is about the future. Get out your crystal ball if you can. And no one can obviously be sure of this, but I'm sure everyone joining us today would be interested in what your view of the future is. How do you see the, the next few months, perhaps the next 18 months, and even further in the future? 
for the business meetings and events industry. I think looking at the future, I'm very optimistic. Of course, we have to come through the virus, but I am very positive about the future. And of course, a great deal of it depends on the event space being open. We know that. And also the ability of people to be able to travel, which is absolutely critical to what we all do. It's very interesting as well, because I know other industry leaders share this view with me. And when I was at the opening, I attended it, of course, online, the opening of the CVENT Connect conference with Reggie Agrawal. And he said that he felt that we were on the verge of a golden era for meetings, which was very interesting considering that we're in this lockdown. But nevertheless, he said that, and I agree with him. And I think there's not only going to be tremendous pent up demand, but I also believe that because of what's happening online virtually, and there's going to be a lot of hybrid events, there's no doubt about that in the future, we can see that there will be, I think will also be a driver for face-to-face -face events. So I feel that way as well. I think that I'm very positive about the future, but it is going to take time. It isn't going to be immediate. So we can't predict so easily for the next few months, but certainly it's going to come back very strongly. During the last 48 hours, I've been with a close friend of mine who's the chairman of a leading events company. They had done no virtual events prior to this lockdown. Since March, they've done 2,200 virtual events. Now, these events are to mainly major corporations in the financial sector. And he's told me that all of them are saying to him, we cannot get, wait to get back to face-to-face. -to -face. Again, some of them will be hybrid events, probably quite a few, but that will only enhance what they're doing. So, yes, great optimism for the future. We've got to survive and get through this period, which we will do together. Great, Ray. Fantastic, optimistic, positive message, which I'm sure all, everyone watching today and joining us will uh, adopt and uh, look for inspiration from as we move forward. Thank you, Ray. Karina, turning to you, the second day of Planet IMEX, but the first day of general education. Um, Looking back perhaps to Planet IMX 1 back in May, what did you and the team learn from doing that platform and how has it influenced the themes, the ideas that are driving and powering the experience we can expect in the next two days or so? Well, I think like everybody in this space, we're learning all the time. And um, despite having learned a lot in May, we've uh, continued to learn a lot over this period and leading up to the event um, this week as well. I think one of the things, obviously, we had to put the May edition together extraordinarily quickly. We're actually really proud of what we managed to do and how much we managed to do. And we got a lot of things right, I think, in terms of building in some interesting experiences, fun experiences, the 3D world that we created. I think one of the main things that we really learned was how to put the pieces of the puzzle together for virtual events. And so we've been able to do that in a little bit more of a streamlined way and with a little bit more practice this time around, really understanding that. Um, I think we've really tried to um, increase the production values. I hope people are enjoying that. And we also learned a lot about the user journey online. You know, we think a lot when we're designing the um, trade show and our events in general about the user, um, the flow of people through our event. And so we've really had to think about that online as well and that journey. Uh, and that's really why we've uh, done the event in the way we have with our underwater world, driving people straight into one online platform with everything in it. And also why we've looked to do things like Monday Fun Day, our community day, as well as our own content and building the networking and one-to-one -one meetings right at the heart of that content as well. Fantastic. And with that in mind, looking forward to the next six hours or so, what are your personal highlights? What are you looking forward to from today's program? Well, I'm really excited about today's programme. I think it's a fantastic programme. I can't wait to see Daniel Fox's session, which is going to happen in about five minutes. Uh, Daniel and I have been communicating since the beginning of this year when we launched our nature theme. So, And he would have been one of our keynotes at IMEX America. So it's absolutely fantastic um, to see his session. You know, another really popular session today is Tyra Hilliard's around uh, contract negotiations and clauses in the post-COVID era.
Um, very different kind of session, but I know that's going to be super popular. A uh, straight after Daniel session uh, shortly, we've also got David Allison, who I saw personally at the site conference in Vancouver earlier in the year. He's talking about his value graphics database, which I think is going to be amazing because it's really um, looking not just at demographics influencing uh, how we do things, but actually people's values influencing their behavior. We've got Mike Dominguez today, always fantastic speaker, talking about networking in this virtual world. Uh, and of course, we've also got Shimin's business today and tomorrow. Um, so loads of fantastic sessions um, to look forward to today. And, uh, you know, like yesterday as well, I think I'm going to be online all afternoon and evening watching them. I'm amazed how you do much so, so much social media when you're watching as well. The, the, the You and all the team at IMEX are so active on Twitter and Instagram. It's great to, to see you sharing all that, all those, all those things. We've got a couple of minutes. What was your favorite thing? Or perhaps I shouldn't put you on the spot. What did you enjoy yesterday, Karina? I know you were in lots of sessions. I saw you commenting in, in the chat bar a lot. What did you particularly enjoy from yesterday's Monday fun day? Um, gosh, so many things. I don't think I can pick one thing. It was fantastic uh, seeing the range of sessions around Las Vegas. You know, we had the Venetian with all their cocktail bars and seeing Chandra Allison on screen giving us um, a rundown of their new space, the Stella Suite. Uh, we had the Allegiant Stadium, which was fantastic. Last time I was in Vegas, it wasn't finished yet. We had the Maverick helicopter tour over the strip and we also had a tour of Area 15. So all of those were fantastic fantastic yesterday. I personally really, really enjoyed latte art. It was a short session. I got to see myself being drawn in latte art and, and some other industry professionals. And of course, Michael is usually on the show floor. So that was fantastic. And then to, to um, kick off the day, we had an hour long, amazing concert from Austin Musicians. So that was fantastic. And then ending the day with a Cirque performance. So, you know, it was... Everything yesterday was amazing. I was so proud of what the team managed to put together. And um, every single session was amazing. But those were, I think, some of the highlights um, of yesterday. I, I was going to bring up the latte, the, the barrister, the coffee one. Um, yes, it was incredible, wasn't it? I was watching that. Quite incredible. Do catch up on on demand, those of you watching that, um, from yesterday. An amazing, amazing skill that barrister has when it comes to coffee art on the top of a, a latte. Amazing stuff. Okay. Um, Listen, before I wrap up with uh, you, Karina and Ray, I just think I want to say thank you. Who am I to speak on behalf of thousands of people joining us? But I'm sure both referring to Planet IMEX 1 in May and also what you and the team over in Brighton and Hove have created this week, a huge thank you. Um, I'm sure I can say that on behalf of everybody, a thank you and congratulations for both of the events. It's going to be a brilliant week this week. Um, I'm looking forward to two days of education. Karina, you and I are going to be back in 24 hours at 10 a.m. EST tomorrow, um, where I'll have another chat with you informally, and let's see how this day was, and let's look forward to tomorrow's program then. But for now, um, I think I'm going to move on to our headline keynote speaker. So I'd just like to say thank you, congratulations, Ray, Karina. Thank you ever so much.